This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, your host, professional Forex prop trader, with a brand new podcast every single Monday answering user-submitted questions. Now, if you want to submit a question, you may do so. And whether or not it makes the show, I will still answer it to the best of my ability. You just go to nononsenseforex.com, hit the Ask VP tab and fill out the little form, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can with the most honest and direct answer I can possibly give. Well, a lot of people don't like my answers but I don't care if you like my answers. The answer that I will give you is likely not the answer you're going to find on the internet right now. Most advice you're going to find on Twitter and on YouTube is not only not going to help you, it's probably going to end up hurting you in the end. You need an honest and direct approach straight from an actual professional, and that is what this free podcast gives you every single Monday. And this episode is a really good example of what I just talked about. So many websites, YouTube videos, Twitter handles, Love to do nothing more but blow smoke directly up your asshole with this question. And I want to address it right now. Again, fair warning, most of you traders out there, especially the ones who are just starting out, are going to hate this answer. It's a very sobering answer to a very common question I get. But again, stick with the podcast, listen to it all the way to the end, because as usual, I always offer somewhat of a silver lining, a way out, if you would if the initial answer to my question is not what you wanted to hear. But I have a feeling this one's going to sting a bit. Let's go ahead and get to it. Sean from Boca Raton, Florida asks, How much money do I need if I want to trade Forex professionally? Now, please don't get me wrong. I love it when you guys send me questions, but a lot of them are quite vague or have some type of ambiguous nature to it. And this one is no exception. First, I want to get this out of the way. When you say professionally, This is the most loosely tossed around term out there when people try to qualify themselves in terms of how they trade Forex. By definition, trading professionally just means you're trading real money, regardless of how big or small that is. So be very careful going forward when you hear anybody say, I'm a pro Forex trader. I trade Forex professionally. Because all that could mean, and they're not lying when they say it, is I don't trade a demo account anymore. I trade a real account. That doesn't mean they're good at it. That doesn't mean they're living off the money they're making. That doesn't mean that somebody hired them to trade on their behalf. It just means they trade a real money account. So if that is what you're asking, and I doubt that's what you're asking, Sean, but if, if that's the question you really had, I think the answer is usually, depending on your broker, 500 USD. Some might even go lower than that to start, but usually 500 is the minimum if I recall. Keep in mind, there are only so many brokerage platforms available to us here in the United States. You know, globally, you know, you have a lot more options and uh, some of those might go as low as 50 to to $100. Who knows? You don't really need that much. And this is great news to a lot of starting out Forex traders because you usually don't start out with a whole lot of money, especially if you're in your 20s. You typically don't have that much money to throw around, especially money you just can't afford to lose right away. But if you were anything like me when I started out, you probably made this critical mistake. Stop me if you've heard this one. You went somewhere online to learn about Forex and how to trade it. You learned how to read a chart, which you didn't know how to do before, but turned out to be easier than you thought. And you learned all the cool little tools you can add to it to be able to predict better which way price is going to go. And lo and behold, every example they showed you, whether it was a trend line or Fibonacci or the RSI indicator, and the examples they would show you worked like a charm worked perfectly, made a bunch of pips, called a trend or a reversal just at the right time. And you thought to yourself, hot shit, look at that. All I have to do is use one of these tools or a combination of the tools that they're showing me right now, apply it to my own trading, and the sky's the limit, really. And you're telling me that due to leverage, I can get $50 for every $1 I put in the market? Or if I'm outside of the United States, I can, hang, I can do even better? I can have one $200 for every $1 I put in the market. Well, this changes everything. It's just a matter of time before I turn this $500 into millions. I mean, think about it. You just just have to put this trend line on a chart, wait for it to bounce off it, and just do that over and over again. And I figure, you know, two, three years from now, I can quit my job. In two years, three years time, this $500 can easily be six figures. I might as well go ahead and just put a down payment on a new car right now because it's only a matter of time, really. And then you go pick your platform, you go set your little account up, and what happens? 
that little system you put together, that little method with the trend line and the indicator and the Bollinger Bands, worked sometimes. Didn't work all the time. Only worked about half the time. And that's just not enough. Because your money management skills were never developed. And the combination of those two things is a very bad combination. And then there's that one trade that just wipes you out. Because you went short, price went long, and instead of abandoning the loss, which you should have done, you figured it was just a matter of time before that stochastic oscillator just started to finally make its way back upward and everything was going to be all right. But it didn't. And now your money's gone. Now, if this example hits a little too close to home, understand that I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of myself because this is exactly what happened to me three times over. And I don't want that to happen to you. Some people can't afford to blow out three trading accounts. And some people will get their money blown out one time and quit. For me, I don't know what it was. Either I really felt like I had something and I just persevered on, probably coupled with the fact that I didn't want to wait tables anymore and there was such a desperation there at the time. But I kept going and it worked out. But I realize how rare that is. And even though maybe that's the best thing that can happen to you in terms of your overall growth is to really, really get crushed once, twice, maybe more, I want to put you in a better position than that to start. I don't want you thinking that that $500, $1,000 deposit is going to make any kind of dent in your overall state of well being thanks to Forex. It's just not enough. You should deposit it and trade it because you need to get used to trading real money after you've demoed for a while. Because especially emotionally, the two things are very, very different. You need, need to get over that emotional hump. Just understand that you're not going to turn that initial deposit into anything significant. And those websites out there that say that you can make 20 pips, 50 pips, 100 pips a day guaranteed are completely full of shit. All of them. I can promise you this. Anybody who's put some real time in and has traded this market can tell you that market conditions don't always allow for this amount of pips to be made. That's how we know they're lying. Now, rather than go off on a tangent about these scammers online that promise things and don't deliver, let me go ahead and answer the question, well, how much money do you need to trade professionally? And again, if you hate this answer, stick around. I'm going to give you a way out. But the real answer is a lot. You need a lot of money to be able to pull a good enough return to actually live off of what you make trading Forex. So let me, let me give you a very sobering example. Let's say you have $100,000 in your savings account that you don't need and you could legitimately afford to lose. So first off, I think that puts you in the top 2% of all earners in the United States. And I think globally, that definitely puts you in the top 1%. Very, very few people out there have that luxury. But let's just say you're one of those people. All right, let's, let's play make-believe. Let's pretend. Now, in Forex, for an entire year, what is a good rate of return? Well, any type of investing, let's say the stock market, for example, I think averages, what, 11% every year, and, uh, and that's excellent. Fortunes have been made just putting money into the stock market and then just doing nothing for 40 years because of all that compound interest over time. Now, if you can beat 11%, that's really good. And that's not something a new trader is going to be able to accomplish. That, that takes some time to get to that level. There are rich people in New York City that give their financial advisor tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes more, just to eke out 13, 14% return year after year. To them, that is certainly worth the money. That is upper echelon, rarefied air type stuff. But let's say that you even go beyond that. Let's say you are now like the Warren Buffett level, who does 20, 21% right about every year, give or take, on average. Let's just say you could pull a 20% return in spot Forex year after year in a $100,000 account that has a profit of $20,000 before tax. Now, is that living comfortably to you? Is that the lifestyle you're looking for as a professional trader? It better be because that's all you're getting. Because if, if you spend that $20,000 you make, now you have no chance to earn compound interest. You've taken that out of the equation. You're just living off of what you make on a $100,000 account, making an extraordinary 
20% return a year. After all of those stars lined up just perfectly, you're making a few thousand dollars over the poverty line. Just think about that. Not what you wanted to hear, was it? Well, there is another way. And this way involves a lot less money out of your pocket. You can take the route I took. I didn't have $100,000 in my bank account. I didn't have anywhere near that. I waited tables. And I bought my condo in 2007, which was the dumbest time to buy. And so, needless to say, I didn't have a ton of disposable income just laying around at the time. But I learned that there are people out there and there are companies that will give me money to trade on their behalf, provided that I'm really good at what I do and I can prove consistent results over time. So step one is get really good at Forex trading. Put a system together that works and fine-tune it and perfect it. Get good at dealing with losses. Get good at dealing with wins and be able to hammer out really good, consistent results year after year. Because you're going to need at least a year's worth of performance to show these people. And this can be on demo account. This can be on a very small trading account. As long as you show a really solid percentage and consistent results over an extended period of time, you can get companies to look at you. But they will also have their own test for you. You will also have to be able to trade in a, what is it, kind of a probationary period where you will have to show them in real time how you do. So if you fudged your numbers in any way or you can't perform under pressure, you're going to get exposed. But if you are legit and you have a really good system in place and you know how to trade it, there are prop firms out there, there are hedge funds out there that would like to have you. You have to be legitimately good because even if they hire you, you have to maintain that level of profitability over time and that in itself is very hard to do. I'm proud of the fact that I've been with my prop firm since 2014, and I'm still standing, and I'm still doing well. That really separates the actual professionals from the pretenders. So overall, the good news is, yes, you can trade professionally with very little money. You just have to be good at what you do, and you have to be able to prove it. And there is no better place to learn how to do that than right here on the Forex Q&A podcast on NoNonsenseForex.com and on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel. I didn't have that blunt, honest person telling me what I was doing right and wrong. That's why it took me three blown out trading accounts in five years just to even get looked at by somebody. You now have that strength in your corner, but only if you want it. And if you do, subscribe to this podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and make sure NoNonsenseForex.com is the one place you go when you're looking for real Forex trading advice that you can actually use and that won't lead you down the wrong path like everything else does. Believe me, I went down that path. It sucked. It was horrible. Over 99% of all traders go down that path and they get nowhere. You now have an opportunity to do much better than they do in a much shorter amount of time. But it will not be overnight. If you're all about quick money and instant gratification, I have nothing to say to you. This podcast is for people who want to get there the right way and in a way that makes them sustainably profitable. Now, if you feel like I delivered on this podcast, I gave you an answer that nobody else gives you, and whether you liked it or not, learn something as a result, give me a like on iTunes. Like I said, give me a subscribe. It means a lot. The podcast is just starting out, and I honestly don't care if I get a ton of subscribers on anything I do. I just hope those of you who took the time to seek this out, and those of you who decided to ditch all that stupid conventional wisdom and join up on my team and line up with my way of thinking, I want to make your Forex trading dreams come true just like mine did. If over time I can amass a small group of just absolute killers, I've done my job. So we're going to keep this train rolling and then we're going to start getting into a little more technical, a little more advanced questions as we go forward. I have a couple more basic questions I think I want to get out of the way, but then we're really going to start to sharpen those edges. So get excited, traders. You should be excited. We have so much more to uncover and every time we do, it's going to get you that much closer, that much closer to becoming the Forex trader you've always wanted to be. I will see you in episode six, and until then, go out there and get it.